Okay, in this tutorial we're going to continue working with the Python console and we're going to step it up a little bit and use a little loop to kind of do some things in here. And if you're not familiar with this console, I've uh, introduced it via the Math for Animators playlist. All right, So within there we do a lot of basic math and then some trigonometry and then as I continue along we start using the Python console. So I'd recommend following that playlist first if this isn't familiar to you at all. But one of the things you can do in here, and just for starters, is you, you notice right up here, command history, up and down arrow. So if you, you type in something like 5 plus 4, and then over here 3 times 4, and then you have those, then with the up arrow, then you can get back to the previous expressions like this but of course you could use variables I'm going to just kind of review some things as we go along you, know, you can say a is equal to 4 times 7 like this and then if I print in parentheses a it's going to give me the value of 28 so I've stored not only a variable as a piece of data but using a, an expression at the same time it's really a powerful tool but what we're going to look at in this lesson is a loop because one of the most common things in programming is conditional statements. You know, if this happens, do this. And then another common thing is like, do this this many times. So those two combinations of things are so, so common that one of the ways is a for loop. And it sounds kind of goofy, but a for loop is a way just to loop through, through a bunch of integer values within Python. In other programming languages, a for, a for loop can go through floating point values at the same time, but not here in Python. But the cool thing is we don't even have to go into full Python programming. Normally if you can just go into Python programming, you go into the scripting section in here and it comes up with your window and look at that, it comes up with your console and your text editor like this and you would actually enter in your code up in here by pressing new, typing in your code and then you could save your code and then you could execute it but we don't even need to do it. We can just use a lot of the programming language right within the console kind of interactively if you want to do some things. So maybe I want to just print out a range of numbers for whatever reason. It's, and that's what we'll do. So this for loop is the way to go through this iteration of numbers and, and you would just type it like this for and I'm going to use some kind of index and I'll use the index i for i for index for index and then in that's another part of the command and range is another part of the command so for index in range is what I'm really saying and then I open parentheses and then I'm going to start at 0 and I'm going to go to say 42 and then I'm going to close it like this with a close parentheses and then at the end of this for statement you have to put a colon alright so when I do I'm going to press return and then it, notice it has these three dots here instead it doesn't look like this these three greater than signs. So what it's telling me is that everything after this for loop is going to get executed within this within a block of code. And in order for that to happen you actually have to press the tab key. So your next statement has to be indented on the tab. Anything that's going to be part of this loop, so I could say 42 times I wanted to do something. Well in this case the only thing I wanted to do is I'm going to I'm going to print two things. I'm going to print a, I'm going to print the value of our variable A, and then also I'm going to hit return, and I also want something else to be within that loop. So I have to hit the tab key again. I'm going to print and in parentheses I. All right, and then I'm going to hit return, and it's waiting to see if I want to put something else within this group of code. So this is basically when it hits this line of code, it's going to go through here and it's going to execute these two commands it's going to come back in here and it's going to take the zero and it's going to turn it into a one and then it's going to execute these two commands comes back turns the one into a two and it'll continue doing that until it gets up to 42 and then it'll execute it and then it'll exit the loop all right but in order to get it to work when the cursor is positioned here it's waiting to see if it if I want to put another statement in, which I would have to do by hitting the tab key. But since I, these are the only two statements that I want in the command, now I can just hit the enter key and the whole thing will execute. So I'm going to press enter and let's see what it does. So now if I go look at the window like this, you can see that it's actually 
it's printing A, which we know is 4 times 7, so it's 28. So there's, it prints A is 28, and then it prints 0. It prints A again, and then it prints 1 for this I, which is my index I in this range. And then 28, 2, 28, 3, 28, 4, the whole 9 yards just like that. So, and that's just within the console window. I'm not even in the programming language per se. It is, this is Python programming though. And you can see the value. It's, it's a lot of power and you can do other things. This is just a basic example. So now let's just continue for just a second and let's go back and do one other thing. I can up arrow back to this command again. I'm going to left arrow over here and I'm going to add another variable and I'm going to press 2. I'll put the number 2. And this is going to be the step size. So instead of by default stepping by a value of 1 from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, now it's going to go by 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. Alright, so I'll hit return and I'll hit tab and this time I'm just going to print i for the index value. Hit return and then to execute it I'll hit return again. And there you can see it runs through the loop and it prints 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, up to 40. Oh, it doesn't print 42. So there it is, like that. And so, well, that kind of gives you an idea. It's a lot of power and it gives you a lot of control. In another lesson, we'll look at a while loop because a while loop is another way to iterate through a range of numbers. But in that case, you can use floating point values as well. Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.